Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. I am Michael Petro, and joining me on the show this week are debaters Ian Bawa, Jimmy Skinner, and Martin Navarro to argue haunted houses. And the only way we know how to do that is, first of all, find inspiration locally. This episode is inspired by and dedicated to the hardworking staff at Six Pines Horror Attraction, as well as Heebie Jeebies just outside of Winnipeg, Manitoba, our hometown. We love coming to see you guys each year, and Martin thought, wouldn't this be a great idea to do so what are we doing well we're coming up with our own attraction and but we're going to pull from movies and we're going to pull from television and we are going to take our favorite horrors and we're going to try to put them into a floor and design an entire floor to scare the shit out of each other in scariest floor wins so that's what you're listening to that's who you're listening to and there's something you should know before you press the skip button we're gonna be at comic con <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do our first live performance for you ever. So for all you Winnipeg fans that listen to the show, we're going to have a panel there this year. And uh, we're going to do a live debate for you. So what you've been listening to for 100 some odd episodes is now going to be performed live again for the first time. So be nice. Be kind. We are only there to make you laugh. You are not there to throw food at us if we suck. I would just like to reiterate that. But although I do love a double cheeseburger, we know this. Point is, is we're going to be there doing something that we love to do, and we would hope it if you came down. So if you're from Winnipeg and you see us either on the panel, we'll let you know what the schedule is and what day we're there next coming week or so once we get the schedule. But if you see us there, come over and engage with us. We'll have a sign up that says, come walk over and talk on the podcast about things you like. If you're in a costume, if you're there as a group, just come over. We want to get to know you. We want to get to know our Winnipeg fan base because that's who listens to us the most, which is where I'm going with this. Our top 10 list this week, ladies and gentlemen. If this is your first time. We love to celebrate everybody who listens here on the show, but these are the top 10 places that do a lot of heavy lifting for us. So without further ado, Lafayette, Louisiana, coming in number 10. New York, New York, coming in number 9. Greater Sudbury, Ontario. I don't know if that's an area or, or whatnot, but thanks, Sudbury. Calgary, Alberta, Burnaby, British Columbia. Amherstburg, Ontario. First time, I didn't even know that was a town. Edmonton, Alberta. Toronto, Ontario. Number two, Lockport, Manitoba. And coming in number one, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Again, we love it that you press play for the first time or every time or just a few times. It means a lot to us. We're doing this in my basement. It annoys the shit out of my wife. So thank you for giving us a chance. But these are just the 10 places that, like I said, talk about us around the water cooler, share the good word, trying to get the debaters out there. So thank you again, everybody. I've taken up too much of your time, like each and every week, but that's okay because you probably hit the skip button. I will cue the reel, and you enjoy the show. Let's tidy up this tangle of film by putting it on a reel. Here is a motion picture film, a thousand feet. 16,000 separate photographs. Welcome, everybody. Base section of the chart. What's the truth? You can't handle the truth. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order. I show you out of order. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another production made by yours truly, The Real Debaters. I am Michael Petro. My name is Ian Bauer. And I'm today I'm the love master. <laughs> <laughs> and in Vancouver... I have, I am Ray Liotta's record collection. <laughs> How many records are in that record collection, Ray? Too many. Too many. <laughs> Ian, I think you got to turn your microphone towards your face more. How's that? Um. How's that? That's better, that you better? soft-spoken son of a bitch. I, I feel like it's too close <laughs> to me half the time. Yeah, and I just have to compensate for your lack of volume. Oh. <laughs> and on the floor, ladies and gentlemen, our favorite mascot, uh, Diamond which is Ian's puppy. Say hello, Diamond. She ate a pillow. She ate a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I just saw her walk by. And again, I have to reiterate, do not give a shit about that pillow because I do not give a shit about that pillow. But when we were about to start and then all of a sudden I saw, and then the pillow fly and then the foam go everywhere. And I was like, someone's going to have way too much fun if we leave her out here. So she's going to stay on the floor for the rest of the show. But anyways, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to The Real Debaters. Uh, we've got some fun stuff in store for you, specifically some stuff that came out today, uh, which is uh, the big DC fandom news. So that's what you're going to get us talking about first. And then we're going to slowly move into our first Halloween themed debate of the month, which spooky. is spooky, spooky, uh, which is uh, best haunted house. We have built a haunted house for you. This is dedicated and inspired by all of those businesses who build a haunted house 
ask us to come to the attraction and put us through PTSD, anxiety, and every other fucking negative emotion that I get when I come out of these. So shout out to uh, Heebie Jeebies, mm-hmm. right, Jimmy? Because me and Jimmy are going to go check that out later in the month. Ooh. Which is, even if you'd like to come as well, too, you're more than welcome to. Uh, the more the merrier, because the bigger the line is going through the house, the easier a time I have because <laughs> I'm not attacked right if it's right. a twosome you're in for a fucking whatever so yeah shout out to Hebe GB shout out to uh, Six Pines and everybody else who's doing a traveling haunted house this and year. if you're just straight up creepy yeah like if this is your house it's your time 365 days a year great even better let's do dinner sometime. I'm going Eaten. to boo at the zoo. <laughs> you are? Yeah. <laughs> on, the night, on Tuesday. I don't know if that's any. I don't know if that's any good. I don't uh, think it's probably for. I think it's for it's kids. fine. It's, like, it's fun. <laughs> it's like. Have you ever been? It's before? not as scary as the Maybe. court. The one outside the city, right? No, not by any. Yeah, you're totally right, Martin. Like the one, the Six Pines one. That's the one that like. Just that's the best one. Oh, that's good to know. Well, Heebie Jeebies is making a play for it. Right. Right now, they've got like a um like a sea can park. Out by Oak Bluff, yeah, I think. Oh, cool. That's where it is. Hey. And also, Amazing Corn does one, too. Yeah, they do a corn maze. Actually, they do the corn maze. They do a haunted house. A bunch of haunted, spooky shit out there. But uh, Boo at the Zoo is, like, G-rated at most. I see. And it's like a carnival, too, right? Yeah. yeah. It's designed for it like It's kids. like 12 bucks. Like, yeah. Right on. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was sure like, it goes a through a good deal. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I can afford $12. <laughs> Martin, is there anything out in Vancouver that you found yet? Like a haunted back alley or something that they put on is there anything out there i don't know i'm sure there is i just haven't really explored it here i'm sure there is something there's got to be something martin's washroom martin's <laughs> <laughs> haunted the haunted washroom yeah, disgusting i can't be in here every time someone comes over the upper deck it and leave and it's been haunted ever since <laughs> <laughs> uh well let's kick into it ladies and gentlemen so instead of what you watch this week we're all going to talk about some dc fucking fandom yes it's anti-halloween but it happened today it must be talked about so we're going to kick into one of three trailers first. Let's start with the Black Adam one, and we'll start with you, Ian. View? Well, skewed? Are you happy? What do you What do you think? I mean, he so, looks fucking rock. Looks like the shit. But like, I don't know anything about Black Adam. I'll be honest. Like, he's a character I knew he was going to be playing, and like. <laughs> I don't want to be like, I was like, is The Rock black? I thought he was Hawaiian. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, but like, I don't know anything about Black Adam. Uh, but like, uh, but no, in general, like, I, I, it looks, oh, man, The Rock is a superhero. I think The Rock's already a superhero in all these other films, like as Hobbs and all these other, like, you know, in the rundown, he's a superhero. Like, I, I don't, I don't he think has he to deal with Sean William Scott. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's very true. That's, like, that's a hard thing to do. He fights Christopher Walken. Um, so like, I don't, I don't. I, I, they didn't really give us a reveal of his costume look. I think it might look ridiculous. Like, I don't think I, I think it might look a little, I think the movie might be a little too cheesy. The trailer looked serious. Um, uh, they didn't give you a lot. So it's a, it definitely is a teaser, but like, I, I'm intrigued. I have a feeling like I, I'm not excited by it. Uh, let's say out of the three we're going to talk about, it's the one I'm least excited for. But, uh, overall, yeah, like, we'll, we'll see what it is in the end. I, uh, I've got some notes here because I don't know who Black Black Adam is here, but as originally depicted, Black Adam was a corrupted ancient Egyptian predecessor of Captain Marvel who fought his way to modern times to challenge the hero and his Marvel family associates. Since the turn of the 21st century, however, Black Adam has been redefined by DC Comics as a corrupted anti-hero attempting to clear his name and reputation, featuring in roles from Justice Society of America, Villains United, Infinite Crisis, and 52 have elevated the character's prominence in the DC universe. Apparently, all I know, all I've ever heard, is that he's more powerful than Superman, and I think Mark told yeah. me that. I think he's got it, because he, he if well, at, he's thousands of years old, yeah, where Superman, yeah, Superman's like what seventy, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Like I don't know if Kryptonians age if they, whatever. But the point is, is that he's got some serious fucking chops. And in that trailer, all like when I watched it before you guys came over, when he did that bullet catch. <laughs> It looks good. It looks good. Jimmy, do you do you sympathize with Ian here on his ideas of it? I think I agree that it's the one I'm least excited for, for oh. sure, out of the three. But um, Even having seen Shazam? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think if that they did end up bringing The Rock into the Shazam universe, I think it could be kind of funny. That would be funny. Right? Like, I think they yeah, could that, do some funny that, stuff. That would be a funny thing. If the tone of Black Adam is the tone of Shazam, I can get right. behind it. But yeah. it doesn't look like it's going to be. Oh. Bring uh, just tilt your microphone a little forward. How could it not though with The Rock? Right. You know, The Rock's gonna be a little silly in that movie. He's gotta be. And uh, you know, oftentimes trailers aren't exactly what the movie ends up being, anyways. 
that trailer was a piece of garbage. <laughs> it showed us nothing, and nothing. I'm just like, I don't even see the Rock's face. Just not even release that. Just fuck they it. They teased like, that was a waste it. Of time. They, yeah, he was in a hood, Martin. He didn't. They teased you. It was a half Rock face. It was a pebble face. Half Rock. Half, half rock. Okay, so. Jimmy, you've got now. Your... I got black Adam blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> you got black balls over there. Uh, wow. What are your? What's your uh, idea of this, Martin? Besides that, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> well, no, I, I like the movie. I just the trailer was a piece of shit. I was like, yeah, what's the fucking point of that trailer. It you um, know, it feels like when they're in production, they're like, this is our best right now. So cut it, get it out there. I don't know. That's that's my two cents. What else right. do you feel? I, I isn't Black Adam the guy. At the beginning of Shazam, that they're talking about the history of the guy who got corrupt. Yeah. When with all those wizards, that's him, right? That's yeah. the guy they're talking about. Really? Oh, cool. It's been a while since I've seen Shazam. I just was like, interesting. like he's mentioned in the movies, right? In right, the movie right. Anyways, yeah. So they're leading up to it. They're doing something Snyderverse. Bring it back. I, Bring I it would back. watch it. I'd... <laughs> that was what I woke up to this morning. Was like every hashtag was DC fandom on Twitter, and then bring back the Snyderverse, and just like more, more, more. Uh, Martian Manhunter. Yep. More. I demand it. More Joker. More... I just want to see that timeline at the end we could of have... the DC movie. Right. The Justice yeah. League movie. We could probably that have timeline. less Joker. Could we? <laughs> I think it's, we could have Mac less <laughs> of Joker. I think one offs. I think DC all should be one offs and just like not... like what they're doing with the Batman. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like the Batman, the Suicide that's where they, Squad. That's like where kind they of fly. Yeah, they just uh, Joker even like it just these just one off little things. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what, what, do the opposite of what MCU is doing. Exactly. And, and don't try to compete. Way. Don't try to compete. No. It's not worth it. Look at look at the monster universe. The <laughs> it didn't it, work. It didn't work. The mummy. <laughs> that Dracula was it. Untold. Oh yeah, that was the, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah, those were. They did too. I don't they, even know what to say. What was it? Was it Dracula? DC, <laughs> you'll never win an Oscar, but maybe you'll win a Tony. It did win an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide, you're not even making Suicide, musicals. So just Suicide Squad one. won an Oscar. That's true. Oh, did it? Did yeah, it? best best uh, uh, makeup or visual effects. Oh, or nice. Something. No, uh, that's, the, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was like the big joke. They're like Suicide Squad won an Oscar. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Star. I haven't seen it yet though. I'm gonna. I have to put it on my things to watch. Starro accepted the Oscar <laughs> and did the speech. Spoilers. He just opened I'm up kidding. his armpit and out came all those those face suckers. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Academy. I'm done. The Academy already had those face suckers on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what blinds them from seeing really good movies. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah I figured. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for it only in the idea that it's The Rock's first bat at the plate for... Um, for superhero dumb for like, a, for another franchise for, well yeah i mean you, like for superhero have you not seen the tooth fairy <laughs> no tell me how is it related <laughs> the vin diesel movie yeah no no wait it's, no that's the pacifier that's the pacifier yeah. oh. they both have also it, a great one called the tooth fairy that's, yeah there's that's the rock yeah with the rock oh is the it, rock okay yeah yeah is yeah. it like do they have to do a movie with kids is that Something that, legally, yes. Like yeah. every time a wrestler gets well, into Hollywood, they must do a movie with a child. What's the one with the spy? The spy one with the uh... spy game. No, no, no. The one with um, Drax. Oh, with Batista. Yeah, oh, that just came yeah. out during the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, a kids yeah. one. That's very similar right. to like, yeah, it's like my spy or something. Yeah, yeah. Something like yeah, yeah no, yeah. something like that for sure. Um, I don't know. I I know he refused the muscle padding. For the costume does he need it no that was what well <laughs> no but he was like, like if anyone doesn't need it <laughs> i just heard he was like i'm willing to make up the difference in the gym right so he takes this very fucking seriously well there's like a whole i think there's an app about like the like the rock app that you can like follow his day-to-day -day workout regime like that exists i think i'm pretty sure that's a thing because his regiment is like wake up at five he posts on instagram all the time he does yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. not yeah. that i follow him but i like i peeked at it because i'm like i don't know i don't want to follow him i feel like i feel bad about my own well-being when i see someone that dedicated to something <laughs> people are gonna get hurt if they try to do that <laughs> i want to make a tiktok yeah. channel where i try to do the rocks workout here that'd be good <laughs> that would actually be like that would blow up for sure right Starts at episode one ends on episode one. yeah no yeah. at the end at first <laughs> one video guys i tried i failed but... i'd like to do a, a, a like a tiktok or a youtube channel where i try to do the rocks cheap day meals yeah the opposite yeah, of, yeah. Wow. No, those his. I think it's cinnamon French toast is like a yeah. big thing for him. And I bet he looks forward to it. Oh man, I've his cheap like like seventeen pizzas, and it's just him. Well, he's <laughs> You're like, like well, really? He's trying to get like six thousand calories in a day, or what? Like, yeah, something yeah, crazy. Basically, yeah. and like when you hit when you own 
the gym, like his gym is fucking state of the art. Yeah, I'm sure. All that Brahma bullshit in there. I don't. Know. I th- I think he's going to do well only because, like I said, first crack at 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 at, at a chance. Yeah. Um, in that it's DC. So and his movies always make money. Always. Yeah. It doesn't mm. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> he could just sit there. Well, if DC wanted a star, they picked the right one. He's yeah. like one of the biggest draws in movies. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Jungle Cruise did well. Yeah, which is a apparently heard it was movie. good. Oh, it's bad. Mm-hmm. Is it? No, it's bad. It's pretty bad. It's, it's bad. Based Emily Blunt does not make a bad movie. You got us there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. What was that one she did with um, Meryl Streep? Where she, it was Meryl, it, uh, the the fashion movie. Who wants a point? Devil Wears Prada? Uh, Devil Wears Prada. There's a point to Martin. That wasn't Emily Blunt, though, was it? Yeah. She yeah was, that was, uh, she's a side she character, did? though. She's, she's a side okay. character. Yeah. D Wears P. Yeah. <laughs> That's like one of her first like kind of big breaking roles. Yeah. It was, and she had to do the English accent instead of the English she accent. Did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay, all right. Check one, Black Adam. W- are we all gonna go see it in the theater? I'll see yeah, it, probably. Yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah. okay. I feel the same way too. All right. Uh, moving on to <laughs> what Ian said <laughs> while we were watching it. I didn't even know this was happening. The Flash. <laughs> um. So yes, Ian, we'll we'll catch up here. Michael Keaton is reprising his role as Batman. It's is it Earth? It's the Earth One, Earth Two, Earth Three series. Is that right? I thought Jimmy? they were gonna. Well, I thought they were gonna call it Flashpoint. So did I, but now it's just the, the flash. flash. The flash, Which is cool. Yeah, yeah. I like the suit. Uh, I love the suit. Yeah, the three flashes at the end is very telling of that this being multiple universe. Yep. Time travel they going gave down. Us Michael Keaton. Uh, they gave us a cowling with mm-hmm. a Michael Keaton narrative. Which can't is, turn his neck. No, can't. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta turn his whole th- fucking body. Do you think that they're gonna make his costume so he can? No. You saw the cowl. Like it goes all the way down to his shoulders. Is he, is he gonna moving. be? Is he gonna yeah. be old man Batman? I think so. Interesting. Like he's gotta uh, be. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what happened? He's I, like sixty or something. Or well, something. like, yeah. but you, uh, who knows? Maybe they'll do like the uh, Captain Marvel, Sam or Jackson Irishman, thing. <laughs> or. Irishman. The Irish, yeah. <laughs> um, you have a Batman Irishman fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> but I like so again, I think I heard about this but didn't like click in uh like that it was actually happening, but I guess they're just following like into like the third Spider Man um situation or into the Spider Verse. Like they're yeah, they're doing kinda. Like, they're basically multi multiverse in the, the They're jumping into the bandwagon. Which is cool. Hey yeah. I, that give fucking, the people what they want. Give give Michael Keaton back uh the role that like made him like one of the biggest stars in the world and like a uh, fuck yeah like I'm all for it. Uh, yeah. Um Ezra Ira? Ezra 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 Ezra, Ezra Miller yeah. Ezra Ezra Miller I do like. Um I obviously his jokes sucked in Justice League but like that was the, Joss Whedon's fault that is Joss Whedon but it actually oh, is better Whedon. it's better in the Snyder Cut yeah um, absolutely he's, his character so like I'm actually excited to see him with Michael Keaton because I think Just his there. Batman yeah I think that that actually will work a lot better absolutely um, I think they'll I think they're actually going to figure his character I think this movie should have came out before Justice League because uh, his yeah. character would have been a lot yeah, more grounded too, yeah. and we would have probably understood him and been more sympathetic to his like like even challenges in uh, a Snyder Cut. But well, you're going yeah. back into what you were talking about about Marvel not competing, right? Right. I know. I Maybe know. they're just like, doesn't matter if we tell a story. Let's just <laughs> let's put the movie out. Just right. put the movie out. Let's right. get, let's True. get it all out there, and that'll, and that'll be fucking that. But True. no, yeah, I, I I get what you're saying. I have been following this only because. I love anything that's got a time travel aspect to Same. it. Like I don't have a huge <laughs> uh, background in uh, in comics as much as I used to as a kid. Mm. But when I found out that this was that Earth One, Earth Two, or World One, World Two thing, where can it, you explain that? Because I don't know that. Due to the Flash being able to move at such high speeds, he can control time. I see. And I think there's an event in one of these books where he, he goes back in time and saves his mom from being murdered. Oh, I see. That was that the, that's pretty much events. the plot of the Flash series on. WB. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's so, pretty much the plot point. Which right. is one of the guys that was the Flashes. Is, isn't that the Flash from the WB series? Oh, I shit. I didn't see a good view, but it could face. be him. Barry Allen. Oh, yeah. Barry that, Allen. That's awesome. That's going to be cool. Like they're all Barry Allens, but yeah, they're yeah, Barry yeah. Allens from multiple universes that Barry Allen, Ezra Miller's character, when goes back in time, breaks into all these different worlds. But it's like, cool that they're going to bring like yeah. cross yeah. over with the TV show. I didn't realize they're going to go that far. Well, right he's now. been on the TV show as the Flash, but it's as, cool that they're going to do. Ezra has, yeah. Oh, I they didn't know that. started the Flashpoint know. series on the WB, yeah. and now they're blasting it onto the screen. Well, we have to go back to it. I stopped See, watching the Flash because I was too much crying. I, I watched really? like the, <laughs> the WB. Yeah, I watched the first two episodes, and I just dwindled. Off. I just couldn't. You know, it was. It was. I didn't need it. Yeah, I ne- it never. I tried Daredevil, and after Daredevil, I did Punisher. Daredevil I did all was Punisher. really good. Man. The first really two good. seasons of Daredevil is great, and I gave up after that. 
I, yeah. third season kind of ends nice. Is there? Yeah, it's it, a good fight at the end. I'm sure. Bullseye like, and Kingpin. It's a good fight. Oh, Bullseye's in yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Good all fight. those. All those shows. Good I kind of got. Good fight. Good At fight. least just YouTube the end fight. Well, the, so <laughs> I know it's it's a little bit of a diver, but um, in the Spider-Man trailer, the uh, um, what's the new Spider-Man called? I'm like I want to say Far From Home. It's um, um, No Way Home. No, no Way, way home. home. Thank you. Uh, in No Way Home. That's a point. The, um, there's a there's a uh, scene with um Peter in a like police station, and like you see some like person drop files and people are speculating that that is Matt Murdock, Matt Murdock from the Daredevil Netflix series. I heard something And they're about crossing this. that in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, one's yeah. confirmed it, but they're saying that. And so who knows? Maybe they're doing the same thing as if DC's doing that as well. They're going to start crossing the, the show. Well, like, like the, they, they, like, um, Kevin Feige has said, like the TV is its own thing. We're not fucking touching that, but maybe because of what they're doing with this Why one movie, they're going to do that. Clearly, it's working for DC because I'm why, kind of excited by this trailer. Why hire another Daredevil? You have a good one. You right have a, there. They, you, you have, have a, Daredevil. At that home. is like the best character within that. TV you only show. have so much yeah. patience of your audience before they're like, uh, "That's also true." Uh, why are you changing my characters? Like it's get, Ben Affleck again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's canon. <laughs> that would be hilarious in the movie if they actually get Ben Affleck's Matt Murdock in. Oh, that would make me. That would that would make me swoon. Martin, what do you think multiverse, of the Flash? Man, multiverse, yeah, no, I get him in the multiverse. multiverse. Martin, what's your thoughts on uh, on Flash Boy? I I'm in the same boat as Ian. Like I wasn't a huge fan of the Flash until like the Josh Whedon version until we saw the Snyder cut. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, now I see what they're trying to do. This is what I want to see now, and I really want to see it because you know, time travel is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's cool to see the different like they're doing. I, this this is I guess this is DC's attempt at the multiverse of madness. They're just like, let's right. see what happens when we play Flash Boy. <laughs> Good point. Is, right. Very mm-hmm. good you know, point. This is them actually. competing, yeah. basically. In a it, with in the same vein, but a different story. Let's let's. Break well, it's like when up. when studios put to put out two disaster movies a month apart, you know, around the same time, uh, right, 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 or two this mall cop movies. Of like, this yeah, is what we're doing. <laughs> if, if Marvel's gonna fuck with time, so will we. Let's do that. And there's yeah. a, a there's a it. there's a podcast uh, that I have not listened to, but I, I was I heard about it called uh, Twin Movies, and they basically huh. uh, look at different. Twin movies like Armageddon, Deep Impact, like ones that have come out around. Dante's Peak Volcano. Exactly. Yeah, they go through. Oh, uh, yeah. We've talked about doing that on here. Paul and I think Lord we've... Observe and Report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, exactly that. Um, the best Prestige combo. Illusionist. Did right. you say the name of this podcast? Mm. Uh, I think it is called Twin Movies. Twin Movies. Yeah, I think right. I, I have not looked into it enough. But, well, yeah. Twin Movies. If we steal your idea, uh, oh, it's your idea. And they also just do the movie Twins. <laughs> Twins and <laughs> Junior. Honestly. No, <laughs> 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 Junior. They started filming Twins too this week. No, yeah, there's yeah. a pic of oh, uh, no. Schwarzenegger and Daniel I haven't online. seen the pic, but I heard I knew That's they were awesome. filming. Yeah, there's yeah. a Twins too. Now coming. make Last Action Hero two, you cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Spend the do money. Do they go like you know COVID? These actors might not be around. We gotta do yeah. this Twins too. This is like been on the bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> what can what can we send to Australia that we can film there? And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everything will work, right? Well, it's like twins we only need is just both of them in a room. <laughs> I like that they're giving these movies sequels. I think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like what they you know the Cobra Kai thing. Like they, yeah. they brought Cobra Kai and that kind of blew Let up. Do and like they're like, let's You're let's see whatever nostalgia we can so bring back. Oh, fucking money with that man! Yeah. Like Cobra Kai has unleashed a wave of nostalgia upon us that no movie production studio would have ever <laughs> thought <laughs> to invest in. Like it they was tr- a YouTube Red series. Why right? is it? It sounds like it a was. Born Yeah, You're right. You're right. It sounds like I'm watching Daniel Big Dick fight yep. whoever. Right? Like it's YouTube the porn Red. Ripper. Totally. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, no, I, I, I can't wait for. Why, the reason I can't wait for twins is because DeVito still acts. Yeah. Schwarzenegger hasn't stepped on scene in a while. He was yeah. in Genesis. What's that? Terminator? Terminator. Genesis. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, he was. That was, he was. Okay. He's back. Every two years. Well, he's not the governor anymore. No, he's not. He can do it. He, he came back. He said he'd be <laughs> back. He's back. Back. Biak. Biak. It sounded like I said Biak. Biak. He's black. <laughs> All right. Adam. Yeah, no, I, I'm. I'm a. I loved Ezra Miller's Flash in Justice League because it. First of all, it made one scene 14 minutes, which was great. Like watching him save that girl from the car accident. Yeah, and yeah. Like flipping over. that was and, pretty cool. And yeah. like showing you his like stretching his power. Was that right? Iris West? It's supposed to be. Oh. Oh, it is. Love yeah. Of, sorry, I remember that. Life. Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, that really reinvested me. I mean, I liked his goofy comedic performance in the Joss Whedon version we we shall not name. And <laughs> uh 
it, but it wasn't enough. In this one, you were like, okay, there's somebody here. Same with Ray, uh, Ray, Ray Fisher, Ray yes. Fisher's character, yep. right? Yeah, like, agreed. it just was so much better with so much more story from these guys. But yep. this one's going to be fun because it is the nostalgia play. It's our old Batman. Mm-hmm. How many more Batmans? How many more versions of Superman? Are we getting mm-hmm. Brandon Roots Superman? Right? Are yeah. We, are we, like, are they going to CGI in... Uh, Christopher Reeves? Christopher Reeves. Right. Rides yeah. it on a horse. That would be really... Not, Why a horse? Because well, he died on a horse. He, oh, my yeah, that's God. How he, he didn't die on a horse. <laughs> he, he, got, he didn't he die on a horse. He yeah. fell off the horse. <laughs> <laughs> He, he got paralyzed. He got You're paralyzed. A yeah. I'm a horrible person. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> there's a great, there's a great Goldfinger song that was like, is it gold, a good Charlotte song that was like, uh, Superman can't walk. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Which is like, it's ironic. It's a good. It's like they made, they poke fun at the. It's kind of ironic. It. That is super like, funny. Good Charlie was ahead of their time. <laughs> well, they, they did the that. Undergrads theme song. They yeah, did. They did. Awesome. My one of That's the best songs. I love that song. Yeah, yeah not great show. Give them a point. I think yeah. it's all on YouTube. Martin, gets it is a all point on YouTube, yeah. and they there's a there was a um, they want to do a movie. The movie, yes, they had a whole Patreon or whatever about it. it, or not Patreon, uh, Kickstarter, Kickstarter yeah. about it. Yeah. I hope they get it. I hope they get it too. Are we all going <laughs> to the theater to watch the Flash? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. That that one absolutely. For, that one's like well, I think it's number one out of the three. We're yeah, saw, about. yeah. I agree. Too. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Black Adam can come and go if I miss it. Yeah. Like we were supposed to see James Bond this week. We'll go Monday. We'll go Monday, yeah. yeah. But like, I have my opinions there. <laughs> that, that's one of those things where I can be like, yeah, I don't yeah. really care. If I if I miss it, I miss it. But these are the ones that you want the yeah. theater experience for. So yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's close it on our third and last ah. one of a DC ah. Fandom Day. And, uh, peacekeeper. Peacekeeper. Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Peace, peacemaker. Now I honestly don't know. That's okay. Peacemaker, Peace, right? Peacemaker. It's just John Cena in his underwear, right. the really. The Peacekeeper is. is the shotgun in Apex. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> that is the shotgun in Apex. It's the one you keep, I saw the trailer open. Yeah. It's the one you keep yelling at me to use properly. <laughs> Any gun, Michael. Just point and shoot. Just point and shoot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just uh, a side tangent here. Martin and Jimmy have been so nice to involve me in their Apex Legends group. Um, and I have never. I'm 40, almost 40. I'm old. And this is the first time in my life I've ever played online video games with another person at the same time. And the amount of patience that Jimmy and Martin have been giving me, Ian, is re fucking ridiculous. Like, like he's doing what he can. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I'm not a gamer, so like, so like, you don't even understand. Well, like, like I know <laughs> games, but like, but the thing is, even like, like I got, I, I was like, I couldn't handle ha- Counter Strike because I got too okay. stressed out, and that was like where I was like, no, nah, like I like. I like games where I get to sit in the room and play with yeah. someone, and like as opposed to play online. So like Mario Party, Mario Party, hundred totally. percent. Like cause I'm a yeah, social yeah, person. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but I hundred percent understand that. Like what you were just saying, because I'm like, I feel that. I feel like, oh my god, am I old or am I just like it? It just doesn't. It doesn't do it for me. But like you know, I can get. A, but yeah, I'm I'm that guy where friends get frustrated with me because they're like, <laughs> oh god, follow me. We're gonna go in and like you know, like I'm like I don't know how to follow you. I'll tell you. Here's the last thing Jimmy said to me. The last mm-hmm. game we played. He left and he was like, this is clinically depressing. I'm going to go make lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, the rest of my afternoon, I played for like two more hours trying to like, well, not two hours. Did like you get any kills? How'd you do? I don't want to talk about it. All right. <laughs> um, you can just, you'll see next time I log in. But like, I, I was just like, I felt so bad. I'm like, because these guys are like, and I love it. It's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just don't have the, I don't have the moves yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> he doesn't have the moves. I don't have the moves, but I will. I will. One day I'll come in and they'll be like, what happened? What did you do? And yeah. I'll be like, and oh then my. there's a montage of you like, in yeah, Kill, like Kill Bill Two, like learning how to play. I made a You're three the ma- best. Yeah, yeah. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. So Peacekeeper slash Maker, whoever the fuck it is, it's John Cena's spinoff series. He lived. He lived. Um, from uh, the Suicide the Squad. Suicide Squad. The, don't forget the the. the. Yeah, the the changes. <laughs> that was like, that was the post credit ending. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're right. Yeah. I was it, really hoping that was going to be Weasel. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was gonna be too. Or yeah. not Weasel, uh, Polka Dot Man. Sorry. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Polka Dot Man zits. Weasel also. My Weasel is funny. Yeah, Weasel. Oh my god, and that was uh, his brother. Yes, yeah. James yeah. Gunn's brother. James yeah. Gunn's brother. Sean. Sean Gunn. Gunn. Yeah. The Sean Gunn. So um, nobody asked for this. It came out like it seems that it was like part and parcel where they were like they loved making it so much, right? That they thought people would love it, right. which is super fucking arrogant, but whatever. Um, but like I. Out of anybody from the Suicide Squad, I mean, I want Pete Davidson. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, he deserves a whole series right. of fucking sketch comedy genius. But like, I, it's gonna be fun because it's gonna be Sean, James Gunn. Yeah. It's gonna be his his thing. 
but I just don't like I'm not I'm not sitting here waiting for it. Put it that way. That's the yeah, one of the three. It'll that I'm come always, out and we'll watch it and it'll be good or bad. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to be a bandwagon fan. I'm going to ignore it. And then two or three people are going to talk about it. And I'm going to watch it and act like I watched it from the beginning and didn't need anybody to tell me about it. That's exactly how I see this. whole Right. Thing playing yeah. out. Martin, what about you? I'm going to watch it. I like that. That style of uh, like James Gunn, that kind of silly, but violent style of of uh superhero <laughs> yeah so, I cute know. but I, I don't even know too much about peacemaker so i I've, nobody does yeah i'm not even sure but you know john cena who knows john cena in his <laughs> underwear i mean it i'm glad he's got some comedy chops his new film uh holiday buddies camping buddies is on prime mm. i'm sorry what i didn't even know about those. <laughs> yeah what i think a cock so, blockers like, which he's very yeah funny in. cock blockers is one yeah. uh, this is the one where him and his girlfriend are the worst people to travel with no I and they go on a this. trip with their friends and it's that experience oh, okay so like they go camping and I it's see. just a nightmare of a camping trip interesting i like when he funnels a beer in his ass yeah 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 <laughs> and cock blockers yeah it's really funny <laughs> really yeah 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 i've yeah. always wondered how that goes like how long it stays in? I saw it in Jackass. Uh, he ends up shitting everywhere. Yeah. Oh, does like I mean it can only, it's only got one way to go. Exactly. All over Ike B. Love yep. me some Ike Barinholtz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the whole scene. Uh, so yeah, Peacemaker for me is probably HBO Max. Yeah. Like after four or five episodes. So come it'll out. be on Crave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I remember when they were like everything on HBO Max won't be on Crave, and now everything. it just is. It yeah. just is. Like <laughs> they lied. Some of the like, some of the movies don't. Yeah. They take a month or so, but. Um, Jimmy, yeah, I'm gonna watch it. You're gonna watch it? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's. I don't know. I like that they're being. I like that they're just taking chances on things and finally doing it. That's what everyone wanted DC to do, and it didn't feel like they were doing, and now they're doing it, and it's nice. So you want to be a metric to help push for yes. more? I'm gonna content. watch it because I want them to give us more. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's and that's fair. That's the only way they'll do it. It's data. Yeah. Da- 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 that's we we all know that shit. Uh, Ian, are you excited for John I, Cena in his underwear? I don't think I don't think I'm like overly excited, but I know what I'm getting with it, so okay. it doesn't feel okay. like an effort. Like I think like where Black Adams, I'm like I don't even know what this is because this trailer didn't give me a lot. Where this, I'm like I already kind of know what it is. I already kind of know this character. Though I'm like like the part of the fun of the character in the Suicide Squad was him and Idris Elba kind of going yeah. against each their other. Chemistry like, was great. Their their chemistry yeah. was amazing. So totally. like, part of me like I did love I don't I actually don't like this trailer. It's an okay trailer. I think the teaser that came out like a couple of weeks ago was better, which is like John Cena showing up to meet his like uh colleagues at a diner and they go what the fuck why is he dressed up in his like costume and then he goes this is a uniform not a costume and then they're, they're like is there an eagle in your back seat it's like yeah that's eagly and they go your eagle's named eagly is your daughter named daughtery like they start make, making fun of him and i was like this is the tone of the show i can get behind yeah. this um it looks fun it looks easy i think it's gonna be a show that comes out and i'm not gonna immediately watch it i'm gonna right. be it's gonna be like kind of like oh i'll get around to it but like it looks it looks i know exactly what i'm getting which is fine mm-hmm. yeah like McDonald's. Exactly, yeah. It's a Happy Meal toy at the <laughs> you end. You know exactly what you're going to get. Yep. And I don't f- think I'm going to feel sick after. What was your favorite <laughs> Happy Meal toy? Because we all come from different eras of time. So, Jimmy, what's your favorite Happy Meal toy so far? Ooh, they they used to give a little handheld video games, like Sonic. I remember and, that, yeah. I remember yeah. that yeah, actually. I do yeah. remember that. Or I'll, just roller coaster. No, that's cereal. <laughs> Martin might <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Martin might know what I'm talking about. Do you remember the Fraggle Rock vegetable cars, Martin? What? Yeah. Yeah. Those are pretty awesome. So, like, you got a Fraggle Rock character, and they were driving around in a turnip. Okay. I just got to say, best toys for any fast food was Burger King when they released the Pokemon toys that you wow. could get with the Pokeballs. Those oh, are the best toys. Yeah, ever. that's pretty solid. That's pretty I bet cool. those are worth something now. Yeah. Yeah. Those things I are. I remember going to Burger King and just trying to buy it, waiting in line to buy a toy <laughs> and trying to get all the different ones. Did you, uh, Ian, did you... Uh... Eat McDonald's? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every day. No, yeah. Every day. Every day. Uh, what was your favorite toy? Uh, the Mario Brothers series that they did at one yeah. point. It was very cool. And then, but I was going to say also. That's I the one did... where they had like the uh, yes. Tanuki yes. You, with the spring. And it, yes. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> um, but the thing I, uh, the thing recently, um, I, I, my, I, I send people Happy Meals randomly. Like I find okay. out. I think I may have told you guys this before, but I just send it as like jokes to people. Cause it's like, <laughs> it's like so easy to like send Uber, eat someone yeah. Happy Meals. And I think it's like a funny little thing for yeah, a day. that's super someone, did someone it, showed up with a happy meal for me yeah I, it's just like i know and they're like who it. sent me this yeah exactly so i do that every once in a while but someone did it to me uh as like you know just like a nice thing and i opened it up and i uh it was the pokemon cards oh. and i opened up the pokemon cards and i got a pikachu 
Um, and apparently it's worth quite a bit. Uh, and I haven't graded it yet. I, I just I'm keeping it like like somewhere nice. So it's worth like quite a bit. So I'm I gotta go get What's, graded. Like, I mean, it could be twenty bucks. That's quite a. No, bit apparently, of apparently it's like if it like another five because those ones are rare to get, especially like the fact I got it in a Happy Meal thing. But it's like legit. So I, I don't know. My friend was saying he sent me a whole a couple of different like Reddit articles and things. But they that that specific card is so rare. And I'm God like, damn well, it! So it's funny. Like you gotta so, find who sent you this Happy. Meal. I know who did. Oh, shit. Um, um, she she's like she's like when I told her I'm like thank you by the way she's like a broke student so it's really funny like I was There's like a really rare Pokemon card thank you for meal. this I have like a probably look. pay for half your tuition but exactly I'm keep it. exactly so, yep. <laughs> my life is good all right well that's that I mean everything else that's coming out I mean there was a blue beetle thing that I mean eh, right You're, we'll probably check it out but these were the big the big three the and big then three Batman later Batman Batman's probably out already which we'll yeah. all see after but that was I th- that's their like stick around stay in your seats don't leave just yet we've got one more trick for you kind of moment but uh, ladies and gentlemen we're uh, we're not going to keep any more of your time here we're going to press right into what today's matter of conversation at my signal unleash hell Push it. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. Goldstein, give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. I know what kind of guy you were. I never would have agreed to work with you. <clears throat> Are you gonna bark all day? Sorry, you repeat it? Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Uh, yes, so now we are going to take you down a journey of what it's like if the four of us got to build a haunted house. So, <laughs> uh, as always, correct me where I'm wrong, uh, we were talking about doing a haunted house thing. And what ended up happening was Martin just said, that would be a really great idea, but let's build one. So instead of each of us building our own full house, let's each take a floor of that house and use our love of movies and television to build that floor. And whoever has the spookiest floor wins today's debate. Am I right about that, Martin? I don't know. If, uh, let's just say whoever entertains us the best wins. Okay, the sure. Yeah, that. I, yeah, because chance. Either all... way, vote how you want to vote. Yeah, vote how you want to vote. Yeah. No, 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 I like that. Your, it's it's your vote. I don't it's, know if I'm the spookiest, but I, I made it as entertaining as possible. That's how yeah. I felt. That's how I felt too. <laughs> I'm I, I I I feel I've got some sort of a spoken word thing maybe happening today. I'm not I'm not sure yet. I don't know what cadence I'll do it in, but I, <laughs> I've, I've 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 got Cynthia! some. Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man! It's a sin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a performance piece. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, anyways, uh, I will go first, and we divided the house up into sections. So I got the main floor. Martin got the basement, which is very suiting of his. Where's my fucking phone? Where's my phone? Uh, Jimmy got the second floor, Mm -hmm. and we put Ian up in the loft slash third floor slash whatever, so we have like a nice true four story. I was thinking Amityville Horror House in my head for a blueprint. That's kind of where I was was at, right? Big house, and then as you get up to the top, it's just creepier and kookier and... Then your dad tries to kill you. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, doesn't that doesn't that just suck? So, ladies and gentlemen, I picked a classic '70s horror film. I picked The Exorcist, and I, to this day, I, it it comes from my love. I, I was raised Catholic, is what I'm getting at. So, anything that's rooted in in horror that has a religious Michael's been possessed dozens of times. Yeah. Like this is not my first uh, exorcist exorcism per se. I've got, I got hours of video of it now, uh, but I just, I love it because it's the closest thing to us and evil, right? It's that, it's that true line in the sand of evil where like you can make a horror movie and you can create whatever ghoulish characters you want. But as soon as that, you know, you're like, okay, this can never happen. It takes away a level of it. But exorcists have happened this is inspired by a true story it happened to a boy not a girl but i mean a lot of the exorcism is based in real life so that's kind of where my love of it comes from but uh my my whole pitch to you gentlemen is is welcome to the catholic floor of sins inspired by the exorcist so with covid causing a decline in the donation plate at church uh the archdiocese of winnipeg 
has decided to make ends meet by joining in with a group of local horror nuts to add to their house of horror. Five bucks is five bucks. Put it that way. <laughs> um, so the entire floor is has... that like the Catholic Church's? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was kind of like, what? Well, no, you know, like you throw five bucks in the plate, right, five right, bucks right. entry fee into the horror house. Like you never know what you're gonna get. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> so. So the whole the whole house has been redesigned. Or the, my whole floor has been redesigned in, into pockets of uh, Regan's home, right? Yep. Where Ellen Burstyn and, and Regan are. So, or Ellen Burstyn's character, his mom. Yeah. So we've got you walk in, and immediately as upon walking into entry, uh, you run into Regan's mom, and she's frantic, right? You've got a character playing her, and and she's like, "My daughter's upstairs. I don't know what's going on. I can you can you help? I've I've called the ambulance. Nine one one's on the way, and you're like, okay, fine, whatever." Um, you start working your way up the stairs, right? Because you agree, because you're in a haunted house. You have yeah, no, yeah, you get, yeah. There's no. The only way is out. Yeah. So um, as you are greeted by Regan's frantic mother, Chris McNeil, she's told you that her daughter's ill, won't speak to her, and is in her bedroom. As you make your way up the stairs, art on the wall starts to, like, shake and vibrate off. Uh, the temperature drops suddenly, so you can see your breath, right? These are moments from the movie where, like, as priest Karen and Marin... Uh, the older and the younger priest walk in for the first time like shit's happening that's really fucking with them so and these are like easy tropes to do like you can just put a little hook behind the picture on the wall and have somebody hiding behind there not too expensive uh so as you move in um you your breath starts to be seen more and as you work your way up the stairs out of nowhere over the loudspeakers your mother sucks cocks in hell right just like blares right in to fuck with you kind of like a jump scare uh you enter the room and regan is nowhere to be found the bed is covered in puke, ripped bed sheets, and a bloody cross. Bang! The door slams from behind you, and you're locked in. Regan's laughter fills the room out over the and a roof. A trap door in the roof opens up, and down she swings, puking all over you. And it's like a dummy that's got like a big puke cannon inside it's of it. Nickelodeon <laughs> gag. It's Nickelodeon gag. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's that green splooge from. Yeah, yeah. What was that show where they clapped over their heads and they got um, kids beat? Can't do this on television. I don't know. That's what I was thinking. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. very Nickelodeon green splooge. Uh, so <laughs> double dare, <laughs> yeah, double dare. yeah, I think that's what, that's it, was. what it was. You're yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, where was I here? <laughs> Martin with um, the points today. Yeah. So as as this comes down, okay, um, she's puking all over you. A door to the back of the room opens up, and in come priests Marin and Karen. They're with their robes, their hat, the collar, everything. They've got all of the exorcism gear ready to go. They throw a copy of you at your group. They throw a copy of the exorcist at the group and they give you a Bible and they all ask you, all right, join in the chant, right? They've got Regan down on the bed and they, and everybody starts screaming, the power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you, right? To get you really wrapped up in all of this. Um, as you reach the climax of the ceremony, priest Karis gives up, looks in the eyes of Regan, which he was told from the entire movie, do not look in the eyes of the devil, right? Out of nowhere, he looks, he's like, take me, take me. He's got one of those like, cables on his on his suit that yanks him out of the room throws him down a hallway which is a makeshift back alley and he's like folded into a pile of like religious nothing he's broke the devil runs out of him door closes another one opens out you go as you're walking out the back alley you see a pile of bones obviously it's fake and it's the priest all crumpled up with the devil laughing and as you walk out and you're praise Marin, praise karen from reagan and that's my floor, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, my heart was racing there for a second. I didn't figure out who should go first. So the floor is open for cross examination. Eeny, meeny, miny, Ian. Uh, uh, someone else go because I'm still <laughs> I'll go. Okay. So first, uh, Marin and Karen makes it. They sound like a like a like a Sorry, like was, a Catholic improv group. I meant to say Karis. I realized. <laughs> I <thought> that. <laughs> It's Priest Marin and Priest Karen. Hi, Karen. we're Marin Karis. and Karen. It's we used Karis. to be attached. Martin Karis. That, or Martin... I don't, I fuck. <laughs> I'm Marin. I'm Karen. <laughs> so, yeah. It's Marin and Karis. They've never but, gone anywhere without each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marin and Karis. But go on. All right. Well, I, I like the idea. It feels a lot more like... You've combined performance art theater with, with like a haunted house. Oh, you get, and me. I like that. <laughs> right, that's what I was trying to go for. It's like if Celebrations Dinner Theater was scary. That's it. <laughs> kind of was in the back of my mind. <laughs> so I like that. I like being able to just be like a fly on the wall in this exorcism and being a part of it, getting Nickelodeon gacked. I think that's very fun. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what I, I, I wanted it to be. I wanted the worst parts of it to be 
the scare. Yeah. Right. Because you could try to tell the whole story and Martin, trust me, that's what I started doing. But then I was like, what would what would the rest of the guys do? So I was like, pull it back, edit yourself, you fucking idiot. Well, this week I'll say, good job, Michael. Oh yeah. my god! I don't know if I have a criticism here. Oh my god! Fucking bestow my heart. Let me. Let me. <laughs> oh, hang on. Sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Peanut gallery. Go on. <laughs> no, I really. It, it's a scare. It's scary. I would be scared in this room. Um, I think the fact that you like, I like the fact that Jim, Jimmy put it ahead on the like. I guess you know, nail in the coffin was the fact that it's like a, a performance art. It reminds me of. Um, you guys ever hear of this thing called? Um, Oh, fuck, what's it called? It's at the McKittrick Hotel. Um, I'm going to look it up really quickly. Um, it's like they do redo a Shakespeare play, but it's an interactive Shakespeare play. I know what you're talking about. Like, oh, I know. Sleep of... No More. It's called Sleep No More. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's called okay. Sleep No More. Yeah. So basically, what you're doing is it's in a whole old hotel room. Yeah. Or hotel room. Hotel. And the whole hotel is basically the stage. And they oh. have different oh. scenes going on at each floor of, um, I think it's Macbeth, is what they do. So, but you're, and you're just, you walk around and go to any room. And you have a mask on, like a it's like a weird eyes wide shut mask, and you just observe. <laughs> and they do they showed it in an episode of Girls. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Like that's okay. what I thought of when I thought of oh. Mike's um, space or Mike's like floor. you know My main proposal floor. for for a haunted house. My only criticism, and take them down. This is like it, I don't think you're utilizing the space enough. Okay. Like it feels like uh. it's just in one room. Yeah, like you're just in one well, room, and like I wanted to see other things, not just your it's. Like, I mean, you're reenacting a good part, but I want to see some other things that you would you would include that don't really happen, but you could play off it and make it your own, you know, like in The Exorcist. Like, can I, can I, the original unique. can I tell you that you're right in that? And then I cut all that because <laughs> I was going to try to include Priest Marin's archaeological, archaeological, archaeological. Or maybe something day. building up to that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like maybe other rooms to build up to the scare because you get to the scare pretty quickly. Like you, because a haunted house is supposed to like drag out the scares. Right? That's true. A little bit. Yes. Yeah. You're supposed to, it's kind of like, but yours is just, you just go straight into the exorcism and that's it. So there's no really suspense or build up. And that's what I wanted. That's what I thought you could have included leading up to the exorcism room was like the exorcism should be your finale. I had like, some rooms before yeah. that to build up to that scare. No, you're right. I had, I did have some stuff where I wanted the, there's a, there's a scene where the director of Chris McNeil's movie dies because he's babysitting Regan and nobody really knows if Regan threw him out the window or not. So there was other things that I, I had noted, but then I was like, ah, I know when I go to, a, I, I, I was thinking from my perspective, Martin, where I'm like, just scare me and get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but you're right. Like, no, I, I can totally see, where like a build up creates more suspense, which is a true horror movie, right? Like milking it. So yeah, okay. I I uh, it's funny because I would say what Jimmy's like, or sorry, not Jimmy Martin's um, uh, complaint. I actually took like this, I this debate as like we're all in the same house together, and someone walks out and they go, "What was your favorite floor?" So I actually thought you utilized the space well. My only complaint, actually, it's not even that bad of a complaint. It's like it's like my opinion in this sense, but like, <laughs> it, it, but it's like it, it feels like it's almost. I kind of wish it wasn't like so close to the movie. I want it like. I want it be a little more like creative, taking aspects of the movie. Okay, and like it, okay. it, it is does feel like two stage production. Like it, it is that, <laughs> but it's fine. That's also it's like there's they can be haunted houses like that. But I know personally, I was kind of like I wish it was like inspired by The Exorcist, not like mm. a full scene from The Exorcist. Okay, um, all right. That that's my complaint, but that's a preference thing. You wanted uh, Exorcist deconstructed. Yeah, in a way, but like, because you started off like that, but then you're like, and then we start doing the yeah, whole scene, yeah. and he gets thrown out the window, and so it becomes like a, a theater play, which is fine. It's just my 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 preference is like I've already contacted the cast of Celebrations. <laughs> yeah, right. This is I'm going to take this on the road in Manitoba. <laughs> do a good old celebration. Yeah. Coming to Winkler in November. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Michael Petro's The Exorcist. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. So we've done, we've checked the main floor. We are in the main floor. Do we want to go up or do we want to go down? Could we pause and could I pee really fast? Is you that can possible? Totally like, do oh, that. Yeah. Fuck, I've been yeah like... Let's all do a quick five. Can we do a quick five? Oh, yeah, we can do a quick five. I like, I, totally. I meant to do it right before the debate, but then we just. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's my, um, that's my tongue lashing from you guys. Thank you <laughs> so much. I, I appreciate it. Uh, and you know what? You all have incredibly valid points. Not as good as mine, but they're valid. Uh, anyways, we're going to go up. So, Jimmy, why don't you... Uh, 
moving on up. Why don't you take us through your floor in this haunted house? Well, let's start it off first. I have a question for the three of you uh, esteemed voters. (laughs) What is your... (laughs) Who are you talking to? (laughs) All of you, really. Okay. (laughs) What is your deepest fear? What, What scares you? Love. Michael? (laughs) Commitment. (laughs) The lack of not being loved. Exactly. (laughs) Not being loved enough. Now, gentlemen, I want you to picture this. No, I want you to imagine this. No. In a world... (laughs) Talk about performance art. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine you entering a haunted house... And the only thing there is the love you feel for someone. And you spend this time with someone. You spend your whole lives, basically, 50 plus years. And then you find out that they were never really there. Uh, you're breaking my heart, kid. I know. You're, you're st- like, uh, th- you, you, where are you going with this? Think about it in a way. I'm scared. <laughs> it's like meet Joe Black. <laughs> <laughs> like Martin said, everybody has a fear of commitment, of not being good enough, of not being loved. And now, if you're in this house for any amount of time, and you find out that all of those things are true, you aren't good enough. <laughs> you can't do commitment. You'll never find love. These are the things that you have to find at the Bly Manor. I love it. <laughs> now I, I I know what you're thinking, Jimmy. How are you gonna pull this off? How are you gonna make Jimmy, how are you me gonna pull spend, this off? How are you gonna pull this off? How are you gonna make me spend my time? How are you gonna make me spend fifty years with somebody who I know that I love and have loved for and made memories with, but it never really happened? Is that what you're saying? And I'm gonna tell you, yes, that is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> As this is going to be a virtual reality experience. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, that's fucking... So you can put a helmet on me. Exactly. So it doesn't even matter. We could do this one room. You guys can take the whole damn house. I don't do a shit. <laughs> it's, it's the Rick and Morty episode. Exactly. <laughs> I smell a winner. I smell a so winner basically, already. basically, you enter the house, you put on this headset, and your deepest fears about love come back to haunt you. Like if your fear is commitment, you find somebody who maybe only wants commitment out of you and you just can't offer that, but you deeply love this person and you want to continue seeing them, but it's just not going to happen for you anymore. This is atrocious. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Michael, what was your deepest fear about love? Not being loved? No, tons of love. Too much love. You're afraid of being loved. I'm I'm afraid of not being enough. Well, you put on that headset, Michael, and I'll tell you, you aren't going to be enough. Is my dad in there? Is is my father going to be talking to me the entire time? Your father will be in the headset, but also I'm going to fly him down. (laughs) So it's surround sound? Yeah. yeah. Is there there even a haunted aspect to this, or is just Jimmy shitting on people for like a good hour long? (laughs) He's at the controls. He's just fucking, oh my God. That's right. Now imagine you have... Just so much love in your heart, so much love to give, and everybody around you doesn't want it. That's what I'm giving you. (laughs) (laughs) A virtual experience. I I think I need to talk about other feelings. (laughs) Because what's scarier than love? It's the scare... it's the fifth element. It, are, you still, are you still pitching, Jimmy? Yeah, are you still yeah, pitching, yeah. or do you want to switch? No, I'll, it? I'll close there. <laughs> I think I'll close with what's scarier than love. Yeah, who wants to talk about their insides first? <laughs> uh, I, I will. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am just as confused as the day I saw Tenet. <laughs> I think I might have to listen to it again just to get everything. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm so confused. I don't know. If I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be scared <laughs> or not. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to feel. You will be. But scared. I, I was entertained. <laughs> and think about this. Think about how profitable it'll be. Oh, good Lord. Everyone will be throwing their money at you. 
I don't even know what you're saying. I don't really get it either. I kind of like, I know, like, I keep thinking. It's I keep... a virtual reality experience where you're tortured for many years at a time, but really it's only been 30 minutes. It's the Rick and Morty episode. Of yeah. Like, yeah. I know what he's getting at here. I know what he's getting too. Like, I I did a little quick refresher of, of Bly, and what I thought about Bly was in my head, I clearly forgot, and... He's what he's using is he's like it's a it's such a heartbreak when you meet these characters and they and what you find is that one of them isn't real yeah and everything that they have been feeling isn't real and I can't imagine like do you have a counselor at the exit when we're done <laughs> like no you just gotta go through two more floors of shitty yeah, <laughs> like, floor two like I'll be so preoccupied with why am I not good enough that like nothing will fucking phase me <laughs> like. You're I welcome. I should have given you the basement. <laughs> What's scarier than love? But he he said earlier, like my biggest complaint is the mm-hmm. fact that you can just do this anywhere. You're like, I don't fucking need a house to do this. I can just do this anywhere. <laughs> and that's like kind of like pop up. You true. you kind of broke the whole like idea of it. Like that's the whole best part is to get the experience. So you're like thinking outside the box. You think you're yo? You made a separate box. You didn't think outside the box at all. You made a separate fucking box. It's not even you're like, in a box with a TV. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> like, there's a room. <laughs> it could be any room. There's a room. <laughs> he's, I, he's he's utilizing as little space as possible to create something that will break you and leave a huge space inside. These are horrific things. It's creative. Real ghosts are hard to find. but <laughs> Especially ones that love you. Is that a, like a true statement or are you just speaking? Like, yeah, it is. They, are, they never want to show you. Have you ever found a ghost that no. loves you? <laughs> I've never found a ghost. I just found a VR that felt real enough for me. Oh, I got one in the other room. Well, you got to just try it then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going you're gonna... to... All right. Well, so, okay. All right. Martin, are you... I, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I feel like it leans too much into the Rick and Morty thing. All right. Um, but, it, like, I like that you're thinking... You're thinking outside, out, yeah. You're yeah. not in the box. I'll say that. Yes, you're exactly. Not in the box. I, I, you know, I like that you're trying I'll to figure know. out a way of doing it differently. I don't even know if you're in the same room, but I like it. Yeah. I'm not even on the same planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, again, I'm imagining this as, like, an entire house that someone goes in, they're going to each of our floors, and they go to the second floor, and they go, oh, it's just a room with a little headset, and they're like, oh, yeah. that was an interesting no, game. No, I disagree with both of you. I'm on Team Jimmy on this one. All right. I, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect that. No, I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to process it, my, but my, my like of it is that it's a truly horrific ex- We didn't define horror by its true definition, right? And Mike Flanagan is doing a thing with with Everything. Bill House, Bly Manor, and Midnight Mass. Jimmy, I'm almost done it, and I really wanted to talk about it earlier, but I was like, "Fucking don't don't do it." Forward. I haven't watched uh, yeah. it yet. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Oh my god! I'm gonna watch it this week. Mm-hmm. I think. Mike Flanagan talks about the horrors of real life by using tropey horrors that we know it's like a it's like I, a yeah, flip and he's so good at it so i appreciate jimmy's idea in that it's do not... you see how good it was i've coerced michael to defend me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i feel like sometimes you when you when you do these debates you don't give enough you go you go just vague enough that gives it like Michael to just like fill in yeah. the blanks and me and Martin you just are... basically met Jedi mind trick yeah Michael. yeah yeah and then me and Martin are always like no you're being kind of <laughs> no. <not> fassy <laughs> and no. we get kind of annoyed no. I'm no. a Tidarian mind yeah. tricks don't work on me <laughs> hey I'm a Tidarian <laughs> did, did, did you just like walk in the room and you were like you are not good enough yeah <laughs> and then I was like I and agree with worked. everything he said <laughs> <laughs> All right, as every can we we got we got two more floors to do or yeah. as everybody I'm good. All right. yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I go to this it'll just be like my mom berating me for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I'm like. That's scarier yeah. than yeah. Be, it's that's just Jimmy's scary. It's, me it's going to be putting the thing on and I'm in the same room with no one's there and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> and then I'm like, we'll just wait here till someone shows up, and I'm there for like 30 years, and I look the same, and I go, oh, this is boring. But you see, I it'll don't... just be, it'll just be all of my relatives going. So when are you getting married? <laughs> like, oh, I don't fucking no. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of VR, so I know what he's getting at. And if I was in a place that was putting the lack of a father figure in my life on me <laughs> with no like i had and i had to get out in the mask yeah yeah no you bet your ass i'd run him for the fucking door that's fucking i don't want to revisit those feelings welcome to Play, fear playing to well, the audience well, yeah. welcome to bly manor level two Be oh afraid. hello diamond 
we gave her some sausage when we uh, went for a pee break, ladies and gentlemen, and she's now fully in love with me. Um, all right, well. My Grand Slam was supposed to come with sausage. sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that from? Where's that from? I can't remember. Family guy. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going up, moving on up. We've gone through two floors. Uh, you've, you've experienced the true life exorcism and uh, uh, the haunting of all the things you're not good at or good enough at or just good enough. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna head on up to the third floor, which is where Ian has uh, is patiently waiting with his floor. Ian, what do you have? So, I'm gonna like similar to you were saying about Mike Flanagan kind of taking like aspects of something and then yeah, like yeah, incorporating yeah. into horror. I chose Hereditary, which is taking the aspect of grief and making it terrifying. I was having trouble picking like what thing to do for this, but. For some reason, this is the one that kept coming to me because I thought it would be kind of funny. <laughs> Especially since you got the top floor. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, I was kind of like, what is the top? Like, you know, I was trying to play with, like, oh, is there something? So, uh, you walk upstairs, and the first thing that happens is someone comes in and offers you a cake. What you don't know is what's in the cake you're deathly allergic to. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so you eat the cake, and you go in a... <laughs> <laughs> and you go into anaphylactic shock, and you go, uh, 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 and that's scary because you might die. Who knows? Fuck. They, they jab you with a pen. You're fine. Okay. And you're like, holy shit. Ooh. That was intense. Um, that's real. <laughs> that's real. And then you go, wow, what else can this scary place have? But while you're going through anaphylactic shock, while this is happening, got it. Um, a bunch of naked people show up. Uh, the cult from Hereditary. Yeah, yeah. They all just stand and they watch you go into anaphylactic shock. And you're like, God, help me, help me, okay. And eventually, that's when someone gives you a pen. You get normal. You're like, oh my God, that was so terrifying. And then there's not really much in there. You were kind of like, wow, there's just a bunch of naked people. They just showed up. They're all hiding. They popped out of nowhere. And you're like, okay, I guess I'll go back down. And so as you're about to go down, you feel drip, drip, drip. And you're like, what the fuck? And you, you look up. And Tony Collette, or a lookalike person, is there <laughs> floating above you, cutting her throat with piano wire. Oh. And you're like, holy shit. Oh, my God. And then you're like, what the fuck do I do? And you're like, oh, I just need to get the fuck out of here. And you start going back down the stairs. And Ann Dowd, or a lookalike Ann Dowd <laughs> character, comes over and gives you pamphlets about grief, saying, I hope you enjoyed your experience here. I know it might have been terrifying. You ever want to talk to me? I'm a good friend. Right. Gives her a pamphlet, and that's it. It's a very quick in and out, because it's the top floor. It's near the end, you know? Yeah, yeah, no. And it's an open uh, space. Fuck. <laughs> so, that, wait, is, all right. That's it. Can we... Uh... That's what I'm saying. You took aspects of the film. You didn't make it the film. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, who are you talking to? I'm like... talking to you. Okay. <laughs> Take aspect of the film. You don't make it the film. It's not a fucking performance theater. You just Sound bites are amazing. Who wants to go first? You don't have to. Wait, I'm gonna play, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can just skip the, the whole commentary Drop. afterwards. Okay, I'll go first because as you were explaining this to me, it was like, yes, you took. And like how any of those things really have to do with grief is such a like it's such a roundabout way of getting to grief with naked <laughs> people. And like, but like it's it's the theme. Yes. Obviously, but it's just how are we going to tell this theme differently, which is why Mike Flanagan is so fucking Mike Flanagan. This episode is directed to you or uh, uh, inspired by you and uh, uh, dedicated. Thank you. <laughs> Making me nervous, Mike. Uh, but I really like that you did what I should have done, which is take an aspect <laughs> of the film, not make it the film. Uh, second to that, I just tried to imagine, though, mm -hmm. lying on my back. Staring up at all those naked penises and vaginas <laughs> while you're going to anaphylactic yeah, like, shock. I was, doing my mind. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, man, you're personal. Like, you are in my bloodstream, literally, <laughs> with an EpiPen. Like, that's a fucking. You. I like Jimmy's because it's still more horrific than yours, but yours is more virtual than his. <laughs> like, his was a you helmet. Fucking... You were like, I'm going to find out what you're allergic to peanuts. This is a fucking peanut cookie. Enjoy. Well, if right? you're allergic like... to cats like me. It's like, That's uh, me. So there's going to be, like, cat hair. There's cat hair within the fucking, like, <laughs> With cake. With the cake. Oh, oh my God. It's just like, Martin, what right. are, you, are you allergic to anything, Martin? Uh, Love. Dicks. <laughs> Thank you to say love. <laughs> yeah, love. Uh, no, but I, so, so the the dick thing. So it, all of a sudden, it's like a double hurt. Like all the. I'm only not allergic to my own dick. Like I everyone see. else is, I'm allergic to. But right. my own, I'm fine. Right. Right. I have immunity yeah. to that. Right. <laughs> You're a never nude. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I. It's it's quick. It's it's like my floor, but quick. Like, it's 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 a onslaught to the senses. Thank you. And very theatrical, but not. <laughs> art uh, jimmy no i was just worried like i only had the question like what was i 
So it's what I'm allergic to, but you answered that very quickly. So well done. I'm allergic to cats as well. I don't want to eat. <laughs> like, how much research, like Oppo research, are you doing on your cu- on the customers that we have in this? <laughs> like, you're, what is what is Sally allergic to? What is Johnny well, it was, allergic to? It's like to? his like virtual reality thing. <laughs> it was like you have to know what someone's like pure love, like whatever they're afraid of, like what they're. You fill out a survey before you exactly. Go. You yeah, do. there's a whole the like background. Yeah. This ha- this house we're is retconning so, in a survey. This house is so scary. You have to do like uh, yeah, like it's uh, catered to entities. you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the game. Yes, mm. it's the game, Martin. Well, I was finding out where we would need waivers the most, and uh, <laughs> I guess Ian's room is, is where the waiver would come in handy, because yes. basically, I like how you're just like, well, we're just going to give you anaphylactic shop right off the top of the hop, and you know what? I think in some cultures, that's assault, brother. <laughs> I, uh, um, it, but I like it. I like, I like the whole thing. I like the aspect of, of, of what you're doing, and I like how you're basically taking just a part of it and making it kind of your own thing which is what i like so <laughs> you know it can i, yes. I it was inspired I, I i said this last time i was on the show i was binging at the time but i finished it uh, all of nathan for you because i'm a, oh, i yeah, love nathan right, for you, you and yeah, i yeah. i watched this follow-up Excellent show stuff. um uh how to with john wilson but anyways there's an episode of nathan for you where he helps a haunted house and he's like how do we make this house scary and the guy's like i don't know how and he's like we get some we make it so scary that someone sues you so they they make this haunted house. They start going. It's like a basic haunted house, and then all of a sudden, like uh, Nathan comes in. And he's like, "I'm sorry. I'm just um one of the actors said they touched you while you were going through the house. Is that true?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah. She just grazed my shoulder. She's not supposed to touch you. She's like has a really." disease and they start taking them to court they put them in an ambulance and it becomes like this like what the fuck's wrong with me and they they say like you all have to go in quarantine they start scaring them and then at the end they like they come out of the ambulance they have this whole like bubble tarp and they like rip it out and it's like exit of the haunted house like they they build this whole thing and i was like yeah that's scary you actually think you're about to die that's like that's like a whole thing so that's where it was kind of inspired by yeah you're just fuck you're deep you're hard in the paint i'm gonna fuck with you to All the right. basement. To the basement. Down the down the the fire escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big pole. Big pole. Big. The Ghostbusters lent us their <laughs> yeah. fucking to the pole. Back. It's an elevator. It's, it's a, an elevator. Okay. Right. All right. It's an elevator, and we no down. pole. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no waivers in my ride. Or uh, a dumb waiter. <laughs> dumb, climbing a dumb, dumb waiter. waiter. Uh, <laughs> Martin, take us through the basement, buddy. All right. Um, so for mine, the movie I drew from was the sequel of Alien, Aliens. Um, so from the top, I guess you'll take an elevator straight down to the basement. Dumb and uh, I went with a bit more of a tr- traditional um, haunted house approach, but definitely big budget. So if you're wondering where the budget comes from or where all the money to the haunted house came, it's mine. It's all the Ridley special Scott. effects right here. Um, <laughs> so in terms in terms of, of the canon in the Alien universe, uh, where it takes place, it takes place during the fall of the colony on LD-426. Because you know how in the in the second one, they basically get there when that whole fight is. So you're wondering, what the hell happened yeah. when everything hit the fan? So, um, so your transport has landed on LD-426, but there seems to be a problem with communication um, because the colony hasn't responded. And as you wake up from hypersleep in the colony... You will see a welcome video from the Wayland Utani Corporation, narrated by Carter Burke, who is Paul Reiser's character. Um, and he'll go, "Greetings, colonists. Welcome to Hadley's Hope, top of the line colony brought you brought to you by the Wayland Utani Corporation. This colony has many anemones, uh, which you um, can find back on Earth, um, which you will see on our orientation tour, which you are about to partake in." Um, want to grab a drink and unwind after a long day of work? Visit Bishop's Bar. <laughs> want to get in a quick workout before your morning shift? Uh, come pump iron at Dallas's exercise facility, facility who is named after um, the brave captain of the um, brave captain of the Nostromo, which is the guy from the first Aliens, um, former member of the Utani family, Wayland Utani family. Um, something for the kids? Send them to <laughs> the Game Over Games for the latest in VR gaming. Uh, there are many other facilities, including artificial beach, golf course, and various restaurants. Um, and your family will, uh, sorry. And finally, you will end <laughs> our tour at our famous Hadley's Hope Fireworks Factory, because it's a celebration when you're always part of the Utani family. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it'll, it'll start off, you know, like like all aliens movies, start off very kind of, you know, very calming. Nothing, nothing crazy happening. But after the orientation, um, you will move to the next room which is part of like the medical decontamination bay as you oh, wake up from hypersleep. Oh, here we go. Yep. Um, so you'll, you'll 
the door will open and then all of a sudden, you know, you'll go from like white bright lights to like everything with sirens, dark, smoke, all that stuff. Um, the power seems to be on the fritz because <laughs> lights are flickering on and off. Um, what you see basically after the door opens is not what you see in the colony because the colony looks like a paradise. This is just fucking what, what the hell happened. Right. So you'll get into that first room. There'll be a big glass window you can look through um, and you'll see some, you'll see um, like a, a patient surrounded by many medical professionals um, and one of the, the patients just yelling, kill me, kill me, kill me. Um, <laughs> and beside her, you'll see all the face huggers in the jars. So this is where you'll see your first alien. Uh, the thing will pop out of the chest of, of the person. Um, let's see here. And uh, after that, you'll see, you'll get like an explanation, like a screen will kind of turn on and you'll meet Gus, the lovable chimney sweep of LB426. <laughs> um, <laughs> He'll tell you that an infestation has um, compromised the facility. You will have to make your way to the last functional um, ship in the cargo bay. Uh, so you have to go through basically the entire facility uh, and then up at the cargo bay. Um, and there's one of the big scares that you will have um, is you'll be walking down a hallway and you'll see a man waving at you. And then all of a sudden the alien will come down from the ceiling and grab him and bring him up to the rafters. So that would be a pretty frightening thing to see. Um, the big scare will be um, what you'll have to do is you'll have to remember in the first alien we have to crawl through those vents, that tiny vent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll have the to do cats. that. Yeah. But this time you'll have to go through the event avoiding the alien queen and the alien eggs. That's a big. Bitch. Um, and once you get past <laughs> a certain point in the vent, um, there'll be like a, a motion activated trigger that'll have this huge alien arm, the queen's arm, <laughs> popping like coming in to try to grab you. Um, let's see here. And basically, I know what you're going to say, Jimmy, is that when are we going to get to the fireworks factory? Well, never. <laughs> We're not going to make it there because it's done. Anyways, that was that's pretty much mine. That's what I wanted to say with it. Like just those couple, like those scares. But obviously there's more, but I only had a, a limited amount of time and I wanted to focus more on just the, the building up to to the aspect of the horror. But yeah, that's pretty much all I had for Alien kind of haunted house. But well, where's Poochie? Poochie. Poochie oh, Poochie. went back to his planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I will. I, I will. I will. I will start this by saying I've never been so happy to run into an alien before. Yeah. Like after <laughs> having gone through what we just put ourselves through with my exorcism and Jimmy's, fucking Jimmy still e eat me away over here, and Ian's piano wire thing. I'm enjoying. Th like you made an escape room in the basement, which is pretty fucking cool. Like I think yeah. that's. Yeah. That's what I loved the most about it was that it was all these mini experiences that were from the movie, not inspired by the movie. I'm talking to you, Ian. <laughs> uh, and it it was uh, what I really thought was interesting, and I agree with you 100. percent Is you're like like all alien movies, they start off calming. They totally yeah. do. I can fall asleep to an alien movie right up until the first face sucker <laughs> slash chest burster scene. Like they're just very fucking calming. Um, so I know I I I I don't. The only thing, like, I think I'd stop at the bar because then I'd be like, fuck, uh, I don't want to do another one. <laughs> like, after at that point, I think the bar would hold me up. Yeah. And then I'd have enough. Well, none of the facilities are, are functioning anymore, Mike, because, like like I said, oh, this takes place sorry. during the fall of, of that colony of LV-426. This oh, is where I mean, it takes okay. place. I thought so you're... everything's done. Like, you're just trying to evacuate. That's the whole point of the, the whole All right. thing. Then but there'd that. still be booze in there. Come there on. Would, yeah. <laughs> there would. there be booze. <laughs> <laughs> drink. That's that's for after when you escape. No, oh, right. I like okay. I liked how you had to do things to get from room to room instead of just being scared. Like yeah, it was, it oh, and I forgot to room. say, um, every colonist will be given like one of those like a little like little lanyard with like a sound device. So basically, right. it'll have that beeping sound that the beeps will get more frequent when something is closer to you. Oh. So it, throughout the whole haunted experience, you'll you'll get that beeping sound that they have oh, in the alien movie. <laughs> so it'll always always feel like something's coming. Somebody's You'll know coming. when something's coming, but then, you know, you don't know where yeah. it's going to come from. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jimmy, what about you? Jeez, no, Mike. I, Martin, I just like how you incorporated things from the movie. I think it was pretty perfect. I love that it was a slow burn. You get the scare. You get to be, the, it's just like with The Exorcist. You get to be a fly on the wall during the movie, and I love that. Plus, even Alien and Aliens 2. Alien, aliens, yeah, alien, alien, aliens, three. Electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are before their time with like their tech. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. And oh, the special effects were special amazing. Effects amazing. Today. So, like, yeah. Like we were fine to give you the entire budget. We just right, didn't know yeah. what you were doing with it. But now that we know, like, right. Um, 
it's the coolest one too. It like it's got Cameron tech, Fincher, it's sci-fi. Ridley? No. Cameron Ridley, Ridley Cameron Fincher. Fincher. Ridley, Sorry. yeah. That's yeah, what I meant. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. And then um Ridley Ridley. Right. Prometheus. Prometheus. And mm-hmm. and then the other yeah, one. The four. Alien Covenant. 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 Yeah. Alien Covenant. I never watched those two to be honest. Really? <laughs> yeah. Prometheus is good. Dave, I've heard good. Dave, yeah, right. Yeah. Fastbender's great as is the new I if I board. the problem is if I do it, I need to do them all. Like I need to like yeah. I need to revisit. I well they're all to... on plus, eh? Are they? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All of them are on plus. That's oh, right. Yeah. That's how I watched a lot of it. I'm oh just, interesting. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, wait, those wait, wait. I never got mine. Oh, I'm. S- I do this every fucking time. <laughs> Mother Because I, because I, I actually chew do. them apart. Go I ahead. do. I I'm do have things. Have, I have things. I have things. I have, stuff. Th- I have things for Martin. I'm this time. sorry. It's okay. But my thing was because it's you did really like it's really good. You clearly like you well thought. It is an escape room which I liked. My problem is, I, I sometimes argue <laughs> that Aliens is a sci-fi and not a horror movie. Hey. That's one. Okay, I know, I know. That's that's something that's subjective. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine. But I think the biggest thing us three had versus Martin is all of our films that we chose actually happens in a house. He's putting like essentially a spaceship, uh, whatever, <laughs> yeah. in in a basement, and I think that's, that's gonna what... look kind of yeah. cheesy in a sense, and not like I like that ours is all built within a house. They 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 are actually part of it. This is like a basement in a like a ship. Whatever a basement being a, a set being built in a basement, which I kind of go, I don't know, will that actually work? Like I, maybe it would, but like it's still gonna feel like, oh, okay, I walked into a set. Where the other ones, I feel like these are will feel like more real experiences because they're actually supposed to mm-hmm. appropriately be in the basement. That was my. Com- that's why I wanted to go last. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like, I mean, mine's last. Like it's not gonna be the same. It's gonna be let's put it to something I, different. And, uh, yeah. When when I saw your pick, I legit was like. Oh, that's that's a good movie, but that's gonna be hard to do in a haunted house. So I already knew what my complaint was gonna be right away. But uh, but it, it, like you said, like it's super creative the way you did it. So that's that was my kind of like my my thing that I had. But otherwise, no. Done. Martin, do you want you get the final word, buddy? You went last. Well, when people are like that, this is yeah. It, I think it'd be a fun haunted house experience. I think I would go to this one. Mm-hmm. It, I, we we all did like our own kind of take on it. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So no. everyone has a different. Everyone has a different experience. Like each floor is a different experience. It would be. I from, don't. Know if, does this exist anywhere? Because this is like a cool idea to like do. Well, if six, someone Six Pines is kind of like that, isn't it? Where like, they do per Pines, like yeah. their themed yeah. per movie. But all well, they don't do movie themes. Yeah. But it's just like different themes for different places. Yeah. Cool. There's yeah. O- there's only the six idiots of us who would do this. But right. Anybody <laughs> else? Anybody else would actually just do horror. So like there's mm. there's the Bayou. There's the haunted circus, right? Yeah, things like that. There's the haunted house, right. all of those things. I would actually like. I think somebody should do this. I think yeah. somebody should make four floors of out of a movie. Movies, yeah, agreed. And and listen to us because we're smart. And we know what yeah. the fuck we're talking. Or about. like get MGM to kind of do that'd this. be cool. As like yeah. part of like Universal Studios. Universal, Universal kind of thing. Studios. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I hear Universal Studios. Their and, Halloween stuff has to be very fun. It, yeah. I know. Mar- I think Mark went for Halloween one year. He should tell you about it. Like yeah. when they break up the Halloween shit, it's pretty intense. Um, but now that we have offered our offerings and we hope we've entertained you, we have to figure out who wins this nightmare. So, um, I am, I'm ready to go now, Martin. Uh, I, I, I we're, we're just going to do straight to voice for this one. So unless you want to write it down and put it up to the camera so I can see it and then we can all have a good shot of it and I'll read everything out here instead of doing the chat thing. Cause I don't want to fuck with the internet today cause Sean is home now. <laughs> Sound good? Uh, what are we? I'm just going to say who I voted for? Yeah, you're just going to say who you voted for this time. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I don't Martin. even know who I voted for yet. Yeah, Jesus, this is a tough so, one. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We've, uh, we're back from the voting booth, and uh, we've come up with a winner for this week's uh, bullshittery for who made the best floor in a haunted house attraction. Uh, so, on the count of three, we're all going to announce. Actually, I'll go first. Ian, you can go second. Jimmy, you can go third. Martin, you can go last. Fine. Okay. All right. So, drum roll, please. On the count of three. Uno, dos, tres. I picked Jimmy. I picked Mike. I also picked Mike. Oh, my God. Mark, I also Mark. picked Mike. Oh, my oh, fucking uh, God. <laughs> He's got to win. That's bullshit. Oh, my God. That's bullshit. You all love Mike. Oh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, my God. I'm surprised. I actually, I, I, I thought, I knew for sure you were going to pick Jimmy, but I thought. Uh, There's Mike. Yeah, no one Mar- surprised Martin was going to get. It's just been, it's been a drought, man. <laughs> no one wants to, I've no never one wants won. to vote for me, Ian, because I'm leading. 
So I know you no are. No matter what, no matter what I propose, they're yeah. not going to vote for me because I'm leading. That's well, true. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I, every time I've been on, you've always won. But still, at the same time, like I think deservingly won. But like, but but uh, but like I actually, he, you did a good job. Like I have my complaints, but like <laughs> I, I I appreciate it. Yeah. No. Mike, well, how does it feel to have your first win of the season? Well, uh, my I can pull out that blank up there. That's, yes, you can. That's great. That's that's gonna feel good. I mean, there's only two months left. So Martin's at four, Mark's at two, I'm at one, Rob's at zero, Jimmy's at three, Ian. I still think zero. You're at, I'm zero. You, you, haven't, yeah, you I haven't. haven't won. Okay, I've come close. Yeah, yeah. You've been voted for, but yeah. So that's that's the score right now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I I, I don't really, know about Charles. Yeah, not, he probably won his first one. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh. I think so. Yeah, I, I think, can see him winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me he, too. He, yeah. Him, well, it was him and Claudia. Oh yeah. So it was him and his girlfriend. So yeah. I don't know how. That's bullshit. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I don't know how, how fair that is. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Two brains. Yeah, yeah, we should pull that back because you might have probably got that win if that wasn't. I wasn't there. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm just like omitting it. I like, <laughs> well, um, yeah. Well, this is this is this this is great. Thanks, thanks, guys. I'm gonna. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna take a picture and send it to you all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to announce some 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 news here quickly, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna be able to. See the real debaters at Comic Con 2021 in Winnipeg this year. Woohoo! Um, everybody would be there, but uh, Martin's in Vancouver, obviously doing stand up, and things are great for Martin out there. So he's the only one you won't see. But we're gonna figure out a way to bring Martin in the day of. So I think we're gonna video call you at some point, Martin. So just be mindful of that. But the the <laughs> we've we've been in we the the story is we approached them. They sent us an email back and they said, "Yeah, we think you guys would be great." So if you want to see us live from Winnipeg Comic Con, stick around, subscribe to the show, and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want to follow. It'll be there. Um, we'll have dates, we'll have times, we'll have everything for you. But you're gonna get to see me, Jimmy, Mark, Rob, Ian, and Charles. Maybe my dog. Maybe your dog. And Diamond. You should bring Diamond. Yeah, you. We should just big bowl of dog treats. Totally. And, and a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I love that dog, man. Like, I want that dog as our fucking mascot. Anyway, so yeah, we will be at we will be at Comic Con. We'll be arguing live, um, and uh, we hope to we hope to entertain you. Uh, if you uh, if this is your first time and you want to follow more of us, just subscribe to the show like I previously mentioned. It's the easiest way to do so. Uh, you want to know more about who's doing what and where in their life? Want to know who's doing stand-up comedy somewhere? You want to know what Ian's doing with film? What any of the other guys are up to? Follow us on social media. It's the easiest way to do so, right? At Real Debaters, R-E-E-L. Uh, that's for Twitter and Instagram and The Real Debaters on TikTok. Me and Jimmy are going to see a bunch of movies these days. Oh, yeah. So we've got our preview review in the car with our cheeseburgers. Those have been fun. So if you want to see more of us, that's the way to do so. Um, you got any shows coming up, Martin? I guess 26. I'm at Container Brewing in uh, East Van. Nice. Right so, 7 p.m., I think, or 8 p.m.? Yeah. I don't know. If you want to support the show after, there's two ways to do so. The show notes, you can donate to our cause. If you want Ian to embarrass you on the show and read out some of your favorite or worst picks of film and TV, you can do that if you want to donate some money in your friend's name. It's one three and five dollar donations any more than that we'll just throw it back at you because that's just you know we're not worth that much <laughs> uh and then you can buy our, our our merchandise right jimmy yes you absolutely can we have everything we have shirts to sweaters to skateboards <laughs> real skateboards fully assembled or just the deck also cell phone cases shoes socks tote bags whatever uh, Jimmy, you got any dates coming up you want to let anybody know about? Yes, I will be at Rumors opening for Rob Pugh on November 9th. Oh, Ooh. that's yeah. awesome. Sweet. Rob Pugh's a cool guy. He was on a couple episodes of The Boys. Oh, cool. yeah. wow. <laughs> that's going to be a good time. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Ask him uh, how long is he in town for? Uh, he's doing a week of shows. Interesting. Let him know there's a podcast <laughs> that we would more than happy to be. <laughs> we would love to entertain him on if he's willing to do so. Do that way after your set. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Ian, anything you want to let the world know about? Uh, no, I'm busy I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm so tired. Of okay, filming. yeah. It's no. been good. It's great. Hey, if, hey, if, 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 if uh, people are uh, around uh, Cincinnati or New York or Toronto in November, I'm going to be around there filming for a documentary about the fire 
movement financial independent retire early one of my mini projects right now I'm yeah doing. yeah you were mentioning so, that before. yeah so if like if you know <laughs> that hit me up on social media because like i uh, i am looking to talk to people about that so if you're if you know of or are one of those people hit me hit me up otherwise like working on my own projects and doing that and yeah my social media is full of my dogs and me filming these days <laughs> and yeah at home. and freestyling <laughs> on a harmonica and freestyling on a harmonica that was fucking great <laughs> uh i've been michael petro ladies and gentlemen i'm ian bala Jimmy Skinner. And in Vancouver. LV426 Fireworks Emporium. <laughs> <laughs> Watch all the movies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go now. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Good evening and good night. <laughs> 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 <laughs>